Bertrand is here, and I got another book review here for you. This is a new set. Obviously, I finished the other book before, but this is called Amend What You Believe In by Cognitive Tom. I think I'm saying that right. This, it, okay, so sh first things first, I thought this was a full length novel. It is a collection of three short stories. I'm not 100% if they're all connected or not. I read into, I was about five pages into the second one before I realized it was a separate story altogether. It doesn't seem to be connected. So I'm going to treat them like any other short story and I'm going to do them individually because trying to remember 200 plus pages of three different stories isn't fair to the author, the story, or you. So this is story one of three. Our fates are well deserved. This is hard to peg down. The stories seem to be all different genres. This one was more urban fantasy, uh, but apparently according to the amazon uh, categories it's urban fantasy action adventure paranormal uh it was published october 12th of 2022 so very recently and is about 61 pages long i actually want to really talk about this one so let's get to it I'm not going to bother with a spoiler-free review. This one's going to have all spoilers. I'm going to go through it all. Uh, short stories are hard to do spoiler-free because there's just not enough meat in them to do spoiler-free and have a decent review. It's just not worth it. So if you don't like spoilers, I totally respect that. Please click the link in the description below. Get a copy of the book. It's on ebook format only on Amazon. Uh, but, I mean, it, it, I set it zero, so <laughs> it doesn't cost you anything to check it out. And honestly, so far, it's been a pretty good read. So, yeah, go check it out. Out, come back watch the review and let me know what you think in the comment section was i right was i wrong somewhere in between let's talk it out so anyway the main character in this one is a legislator named griffin i think that's his first name i i didn't get a last name in this one at all uh i it's it's a weird sort of earth it's not earth uh like their solar system only has one other planet in it or at least they've only discovered one other planet and it exploded all this stuff so either this is way far in the future after the apocalypse and society has regrown or this is just another planet altogether where humanity is is well screwing everything up let's be honest <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i don't believe this is earth at all but it's like it's a completely different planet but very similar to earth in in the way everything works there was no supernatural or paranormal stuff going on that i saw there's no superheroes or anything like that just politicians being politicians uh griffin is a legislator of district five of the country ever spirit he's literally adored like a rock star by his constituents uh and honestly he comes off the author kind of makes him come off as a decent guy as you know a man of the people he even tells his other legislator buddies in his district hey you know shake some hands kiss some babies you know uh keep up the act you're you're kind of antisocial, and that's no good it, it seems like a decent guy i gotta be honest i liked him at first uh he, the people like him they shake his hand they chant his name he's a rock star they've got literal things of him at home paraphernalia his picture is on everything bumper stickers toys uh couch covers it, it's it's kind of crazy uh but you know, like like all, well, I shouldn't say like all, but like like the stereotype would would suggest, Griffin turns out to be exactly the kind of legislator, politician, whatever you want to call him, uh, that you would stereotypically expect. He's a liar, a deceiver, and uh, it's discovered because they get cell phones. It's kind of neat. Uh, cell phone technology is given out to all the the legislators, not to the common people, because you know the common people don't need them. Uh, but they're given to them as a tool to make everything more efficient and to make communication with themselves and their constituents more, more, more immediate and stuff like that. And it works. Uh, but just like everything else, the legislators get very addicted to their cell phones and they start putting everything in there. There's text messages, pictures, files, all that stuff that gets put in there. And it gets lost. One of the legislators, who's a bit of an idiot, loses their cell phone doesn't have a password on it or anything like that it's discovered all of this is found out and the people rebel against them all of them uh they send them off to the wars and stuff i'll get into that a little bit more in a minute and in the end griffin gets a literal bomb dropped on him it's it's actually kind of uh brave the uh the authors was like yeah yeah um He's a new voice, and uh, I, I was kind of impressed with, with this story. 
not everything though. The cover is, um, for uh, to be perfectly blunt, trash. This cover is amateur. It's uh, half baked. It's got no real effort put into it it looks like four pictures thrown together in a very basic uh photoshop type editing program with four or three different fonts four different uh, text fonts used uh, amend well maybe what you believe in is the same font but cog cogitative tom it's it's very cheap very amateurish and if i was looking at it uh either on amazon or in a bookstore i would have walked right past it it's different resolutions in the pictures it's there's no blending it's very very quick cheap and a lot of corners cut i don't like the cover at all i would highly recommend to the author because honestly the story is good or at least this one is um i highly recommend to the author to to go on fiverr or miblart or something like that no i'm not sponsored by any of them these are just the companies i've used fiverr i've not used miblart but i have uh very good sources that say miblart is is very good at this at all different price ranges uh my covers for example are very professional very good yes i know i'm biased but it's true uh and it cost me about 60 bucks save up i know that's a lot of money for some people i get that no disrespect intended save up because this book deserves a better cover because right now it's it's trash i'm sorry i'm not trying to be a jerk i'm trying to be honest the editing spot on no issue with the editing at all uh this author uses a lot of very flowery words uh, a lot of big words a lot of uh crazy descriptors and stuff like that uh you're you're not going to get lost in this world the author's got a very good grasp of the english language the dialogue is a little a little off a little stilted at times it's not perfect but i'm you don't have to be completely perfect in order to get my respect and this author definitely has that <laughs> uh it was impressive how good the story was uh, so yeah, the editing was was good. Uh, I have no real complaints about the editing. Story flow was good. At no point was I bored. It's not an action-packed story at all. In fact, there's very little action. Yet the whole time, it was interesting. It held my attention. Uh, I wasn't distracted. I didn't feel the need to skip any sections. It was good, and the feel was was not. Once you get used to it, the the prologue starts off with a couple of butterflies, and one of them gets horny and starts looking for its mate, and you're like, oh okay this is is going to be a more flowery story a little bit more a little bit more um imaginative no problem and then the butterflies get cr crushed it's like oh oh okay no <laughs> but it was it what my point in saying all that is the author catches my attention immediately like when i'm like I'm, i was almost disappointed like oh this is going to be one of those more more feeling intensive books. And it, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not my particular flavor, but I was trying to get my mind around it. And next thing I know, no, it's a very engaging, interesting story with very little action. Uh, I was I was impressed. So the feel is good. Uh, overall, other than the cover, it, those the, the four categories, the four pillars there are, are pretty freaking good. So as I stated, the, the story kind of starts off with the butterfly thing, but I've already been over that, so I don't want to go over it again. But uh, Griffin is introduced as an almost rock star-like legislator. They're at a funeral for a politician that died in one of the other districts, and some people are crying, some people are laughing, some people are you know happy that he's gone. It, it's you know exactly what you would expect from legislators. But a legislator is basically a politician, and he's a legislator for District Five of his country of Ever Spirit. Uh, you find out that this position was given to him as a birthright it wasn't an election he didn't earn this his grandfather was a legislator his father was a legislator and now he's a legislator and how it works is that when one of the legislators dies one of their children one of the other legislators children are tapped by some sort of you know big brother entity you don't really find out if there's a president or an overall emperor or anything like that i mean they they talk about like this jesus character or whatever but I, I don't think that's it it's more like the religious cult that all the the people are a part of uh but yeah he's you know it, it just seems like they tap one of the legislator's children to take over their position and they're trained from 14 years old on how to be a legislator uh griffin has a son grant who's 14 years old and is going to school and he's learning all the things he needs to learn in order to be a nice little muppet uh legislator when it's his time 
Uh, that could happen when he turns 18, but in the story it even says that more than likely uh, Grant will be well into his 30s before he's tapped to do his job as a legislator, which honestly isn't too bad because legislators seem to live a life of luxury. They have very nice three-story homes, they eat great food, and uh, yeah, they got to do their own maintenance and stuff like that. But for the most part, I mean, they've got their own subdivision. It's kind of segregated. They take limos everywhere. No more than three people are in the limo with them at any time. It It's pretty pretty nice they can come and go as they please the only thing that they have to do is kind of posture shake hands kiss babies and then vote when the things happen but the votes are rigged they already know how they're going to turn out they say a bunch of stuff but it turns out no no they've already decided how the vote's going to go it's just population control that's their job and the few times a year they have to do their job they do it and when they don't they, they they relax. I mean, he's got a literal hand-woven cotton hammock on his front porch that he spends a lot of time in. It's, it's a very pampered life. Uh, the rest of the population does not seem to live as luxuriously. Uh, in fact, they, they all seem to be in relative squalor in comparison, which, you know, I mean, it's a trope we've all seen before, so it wasn't hard to get into this one. Uh, in the very beginning of the book, mobile phones are introduced. This is a new technology in this world, and it's given to all the different politicians, Griffin included. Uh, they're obviously very addictive, but efficient. Griffin's a little standoffish. She doesn't like the idea of mobile phones, but pretty much everyone else falls in love with them. They use them. They put all their files in there. They text. They set up meetings. All their information's on the mobile phone. You can kind of see where this is going. Uh, Ever Spirit, what you find out is Ever Spirit sends about half of their youth overseas to fight in wars. What happens is when someone's born in this country, they literally flip a coin. If it's heads, you don't have to enlist. Uh, if it's tails, at 14 years old, you enlist. And for four years until you're 18, you train to be a soldier in this country. At 18 years old, there's a little ceremony, you get a little white uh, ribbon, and then you're sent to fight overseas in one of the many, many wars that's occurring. Turns out uh, one of the things that they say is a war is actually not a war, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, most, if not all, of the people they send overseas to fight in these wars do not come home. They die or they just never hear from them again. Uh, the population of Everspirit is pretty unhappy about that. It's been decades of constant war and half their population, half their children not coming back. Uh, basically, you flip that coin and it ends up tails, your kid's dead. Uh, and, it, and it sucks. You're never going to see them again. As soon as they go off to war, that's it. They're, they're, they're done. And so they're they're pushing their politician Griffin in this case to to uh, amend the law so that their these wars will stop and their troops come home. They want their kids home. Griffin swears up, down, and sideways he's going to make that happen. He 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 gives a bunch of stump speeches about it. He goes all around the district and swears he's going to make that happen. And the people love him for it. There's there's action figures, stickers, uh, bumper stickers. There's there's uh, likenesses of him on their couch covers. I mean, this guy's bigger than any celebrity you've ever heard of in in our world. And like people come out, they sing to him. They they want to shake his hand they want to give him high fives they love this guy and he eats it up and he's good at it he is very charismatic and he's very good at keeping the people happy uh however when the vote comes up for it everyone votes to not end the wars to not amend the rule including griffin and then they laugh about it and griffin's got a pre uh pre-made little speech to send out to everybody about how oh it was close we missed it by two votes but i'm confident next time we vote on this we'll be able to get it fixed but no there was no intention at all they're just kicking the can down the road and and you know leading the people on by the nose it's it's kind of a twist you don't expect it because griffin comes off the author does a fantastic job of making Griffin a very uh, charismatic and likable guy. But when the shoe drops and, and you find out that he's just as big of a scumbag as all the rest of them, it's like it, it kind of hits you in the throat a little bit. It's like, well, damn, Griffin. <laughs> I, was, I was impressed because I did not see that coming. Very well done by the author. So the mobile phones are really important, right? Like all the legislators are using them and they're they're making sure that, you know, they, they do their tax, they do their remotes, they share files. It's all kept on the phones. And so all the lies, deceit, all the proof that they're scumbags is, is on this mobile network that they're all using. And they're the only ones using it, right? 
Well, the newest legislator, Rebecca, who replaced the dead legislator from the beginning of the story, loses hers. They, they come back from something and she's like, I don't know where it is. And it's a huge big deal because not only did she lose it, but there was no password protection. She never set up a password, which... It bothers me a little bit. Now, I know this isn't Earth. This isn't our world. So anything could, could say. And that's how I kind of suspended my disbelief. I was like, okay, this isn't Earth. Although these are humans and this is all our technology. There's nothing sci-fi about this. It's just, it bothers me because like since the invention of all this stuff, they've had the, like even with beepers, they could go back and, and shut down those things. Like somebody had the master key. And so the fact that she loses hers and all that information is exposed and they have no way to shut it down, it feels a little far-fetched to me, but okay. Okay, okay, I can get there. It feels like a little bit of a plot hole, though. I don't like that, oh, this thing is just exposed because I don't have a password on it. it well, they, they issued it a number. They set it up on the, on the network. They're storing stuff under her, which means they should be able to go in there and at a minimum delete everything so that nobody else can see it. But that's not what happens. Uh, they're, they're like, oh, we have to find it. So it's gone for three weeks. They literally, they go out and they do something even stupider here. They announce it. Hey, a legislator's phone is lost. It looks like a little rectangle thingy. If you see it, please return it to your closest government office. Thank you. Um, it's kind of ridiculous. It's like, hey, listen, um, we were out and about and we we left the nuclear football uh, somewhere in Chicago. If y'all find it, please don't open it or sell it to our adversaries or, you know, get curious. Just just put it in the mailbox so it goes back to where it's going. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Talk about putting gasoline on the nuclear fire, right? So it's gone for about three weeks, and then it's miraculously found, and everybody breathes a sigh of relief. That night, <laughs> the population of Everspirit rises up against the legislators and invades their subdivision. And I know what you're thinking. Where's their weapons? Where's their soldiers? Where's their protective squad? Where's their bodyguards? Well, what they found on this phone and that they've been sharing around to everybody that'll listen, which is everybody, uh, they find out that basically their these wars, their gross net, their export product is soldiers. Ever Spirit's export product is soldiers. That's why so many go out and so few come back, if any, because that's their job. They they provide and and sell soldiers to the rest of the world to fight in whatever endless crazy war they're currently in. Uh, Sometimes they sell to both sides. It's really horrible. Bravo to the author to setting all this up because I got to be honest, I didn't fully see that coming. I knew something twisted was coming, but I didn't realize it was going to be that bad. And it gets even worse because one of the places, Maritown or something like that, that they're sending people, there's not even a war there. They're sending soldiers there to put them, to, to basically confine them into slavery, into slavery, to work at the mines. And in return, Everspirit gets, uh, gets, what's it called, some of the resources that they're mining in payment. And that's why nobody ever comes back from that town. Everybody is considered dead because they get they get mined to death. Or, you know, they, they get worked into death. It's horrible. Absolutely horrible. The author paints the picture beautifully. I mean, I was sitting on a public train and I started getting angry at these make-believe politicians. <laughs> I was like, wow, he invoked an emotional response. Well done, Mr. Tom. Uh, so anyway, the population rises up against their legislators and goes after the, the people of Everspirit and uh, attacks their subdivision and literally pulls them out of their homes, them and their families. Very honestly realistic if something like that were to occur. I don't believe just because you're not the legislator isn't going to save you from the butt whooping. And they do. They beat them down even even uh what's about griffin's 14 year old son grant he catches a butt whooping too just for sharing dna with him they beat them down bind them they break griffin's wrist they they kick him punch him he's all sorts of tore up 
And uh, when they all wake up, they're on boats uh, that are going to the, all the legislators that survived. Now, they don't necessarily say that they killed any of the legislators, uh, mostly because of the religion that they follow. However, they do say that because of the religion they follow, uh, everyone's allowed to fight to, to take the lead or to prove their worth. So they send a bunch of they send the surviving legislators to the different wars to to go fight and die in them you know it's it's kind of awesome it's poetic justice a little bit and then the leader of the legislators and rebecca the one that lost her phone they put on a boat to go over to maritown to become slaves and to basically you know work themselves to death so they can feel what their soldiers did and stuff like that it's crazy i was like wow that's something else and the leader of the the legislators tammy or whatever she tells them she's like hey you short-sighted idiots if if you do that they're gonna just invade you and take you over you won't last without us you need us and they're like yeah whatever we'll figure it out and they send them to the wars and they send them to to become slaves and stuff like that uh griffin kind of passes out they're on the boats the boats are all automated and everything like that but yeah they send them to the uh to the front lines and as griffin gets there his son is like why didn't you tell me that we were scumbags? Because he thought he he was buying the Kool-Aid, you know, drinking it and, and enjoying it, savoring the flavor. And he's like, Dad, why didn't you tell me this? And the dad's real flippant about it. He's like, because he didn't need to know. I figured you'd figure out when you figured it out. But isn't it wrong what we were doing? What made, you know, aren't you ashamed? Why would you think I'd be ashamed of it? I did what I was supposed to do. I filled my purpose. Well, Grant gets upset and starts kicking the crap out of his dad and his dad just kind of takes it because he knows he's dead. And sure enough, a flame flies over and drops a bomb on them. And the last thing you see or hear is Griffin hearing the sound of a bomb coming down as it hits the boat and blasts him and everyone else into the next life. It's a complete story, and it's a pretty solid one at that. I, I got to admit, I enjoyed the heck out of this. So what did I rate this entire this this particular story? Honestly, I, I had to debate a little bit. I was It literally came down to half a star, and I'm going to get to why in just a second, because this is a very, very good story. It's complete. It's concise. It's enjoyable. It has a beginning, middle, and, middle, and end. It had a great hook. It had very compelling characters, the, the, the wording and stuff like that. There is a little bit of dialogue stiltedness, but that could just be me being nitpicky. So in the end i ended up giving it four and a half out of five stars here's why i couldn't give it the fifth star nothing about this book nothing about the cover the the table of contents the the intro the prologue the back cover the description the blurb nothing about this book tells me that it's a collection of short stories i sat down thinking that this was going to be a novel and what bothers me so much about that is that instead of a novel, I got three short stories. It's like sitting down to read poetry and instead you get uh, Lord of the Rings. It's still a great story, but it is not what you sat down for. It is not what you promised. And I'm not saying that the author did it to deceive. I'm not saying that the author was being a jerk or anything like that. It's probably just an oversight. But the problem is... I, I, I was I was ready for poetry and I got Lord of the Rings. It's not un, un, unappreciated. Definitely enjoyed this story. It is one of the better stories I've read in a little while. But uh, I, I couldn't get to the fifth star because it wasn't presented right. And yes, maybe this is a, a spite half star. Maybe this is just me pouting. Maybe I'm totally accurate here, but I could not go to five out of five stars. Some of the dialogue's a little stilted, a little like people don't necessarily talk like that. If you say it out loud, it doesn't, it doesn't flow right. I think that could have been it. But Honestly, this story is really, really good. I could have overlooked all that. It was the fact that it turned out to be a short story. I was not prepared for it to end the way it did. And then the next story pick up and has nothing. I read five pages into the next one before I realized, oh, this isn't connected at all. This isn't like a continuation. This is something completely different. And that really bothers me because the first story was so good. I was hoping for more. I was hoping like it would be like if, if Lord of the Rings ended after the fellowship, it was just done. And then the next story was 
I, I don't know, Stargate SG-1 or something. <laughs> Just, it wasn't, neither of them are bad on their own. And shut up, Stargate and Lord of the Rings is great. But it, it's just, you weren't, I wasn't prepared. It wasn't over for me. I wanted more. I was expecting more because I thought this was a full-blown novel. And it turned out not to be that. And uh, it, that bothers me. That really eats at me a lot. So maybe this is a five out of five star story. It definitely felt that way. But the fact that it was presented wrong, it just left a bad taste in my mouth afterwards. It, it didn't, uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't happy when I ended the story. And that's important. You want your reader to leave a story happy or, or entertained or satisfied. And it just, it, I wasn't satisfied once I realized what happened. It, finding out that it was a short story when it was presented to me like it was a novel really hurt the story in my opinion uh but you know what this is just one selfish guy's opinion <laughs> you know maybe maybe you should click the link below and get the book and check it out it's free on amazon at least as of this recording and uh you know check it out read it it's only 60 so on 61 62 pages you can knock that out real quick and let me know is it five stars is it four stars is it somewhere in between was i right wrong indifferent i mean let me know what you think uh you know in the comment section below i'd love to have a conversation about this because i actually had to sit in this one for a little while in order to decide whether or not i was going to go four and a half to five but i try to base it off my integrity and my opinion on the situation and that's what my that's what my guts told me this is a four out of five or four and a half out of five and that's only because it was presented as a full-blown novel and what i got was a short story and uh I just, I could not say five out of five because of just the way the letdown I felt once I realized that I almost felt tricked. And I'm not trying to say that the author did it on purpose or anything like that. I have no doubt it was just an oversight. And I know that seems petty and I'm not arguing. I'm not saying it's not petty, but as the consumer, as the reader, as the individual that's supposed to be entertained by this, I get to be a little petty. There's 70 million books out there written and over a million are uh, published every day. I can be choosy. I can be picky. And I'm going to choose to be picky. Four and a half out of five stars. Get the book, read the story, and come fight me in the comments section. I'm looking forward to it. And that's it. That's it for this book review. Another one's in the history books. As always, though, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comments section below, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. And as always, thanks.